Welcome to Christ Open Door Community Church. We are located at 5265 Alhambra Drive, Suite C in Orlando, Florida, 32808. Every Sunday, we have Christian education at 10.15 a.m. and worship service at 11.15 a.m. We'd love to have you. Now for today's message. Amen. I'm not long-winded. I just have a lot to say. Amen. I don't try to be long-winded, but when you're studying the Word of God and when you care about the people of God, you want to feed them the word of God. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. If you would, grab your Bibles. We're going to the book of Matthew 8. Um, start at verse 5 through 13. Matthew 8, verses 5 through 13. If you left your Bible home or left it on the dashboard, um, we have a description on the screen to the left. Well, it's to the right. Matthew 8. I'm reading out two different versions today for the main text portion. Starting at verse 5, New King James, then I'm going to read it from the New American Standard. And it reads out of New King James. If you can't keep up, you know what I like to say. Get the tape. Verse 5, and it says, Now when Jesus had in a Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is like at home, paralyzed, dreadful, tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. And my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. Yes. And to another, come, and he comes. Yeah. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Amen. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who follow, Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you, that many will come from the east to west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12, but when the sons of the kingdom will be cast out unto the out of darkness, and there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Verse 13, then Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. Mm -hmm. And his servant was healed from that hour. Now from the New American Standard Version. I know I'm not going to read all of it, just 5 through 10. And when Jesus came into Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now verse 10, now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Today's subject matter is unwavering faith. And this is another series anchored unwavering faith. This is a two-part series. Amen. 
The other part will be on the first Sunday of October. Unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. And Capernaum means a place, supposedly it means a place of encouragement or a place of assistance or a place of help. But we see at this particular time that such a name, they did not live up to such a name that they supposedly had. And a lot of times, the upper echelons or the people that would be on the hierarchy of life would be able to receive what many should receive. But Jesus found a man, he encountered this particular centurion, and a centurion soldier was one that had a platoon of about roughly about 100 people that would be under him. And one thing this particular satirian understood was order. Sometimes people realize one of the key things that causes you not to receive a lot of things from God is order Amen. and accountability. Amen. And he, 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 when he encountered Jesus, he knew something about Jesus. He knew the mere fact that he possessed such power and authority. And when he knew that Jesus possessed such power and authority, it wasn't nothing for him to say, you're not even worthy to come under my roof. Why? Because he looked at Jesus as a hierarchy. Yes, amen. amen, somebody. Amen. Do you know your perception of Christ makes a difference, not just in your life, but the people around you? Amen. If you diminish Christ, other people that are connected to you will feel the same way. Yes. If we give our children uh, options about church and options about certain things to build the spirituality, then they will not take it as serious. Why? Because you as the conduit, you as the parent, you as the guardian, you as the true role model yes, that they spend yes. most of the time with at home when they watch you and observe you, yes. then how they feel will be based and predicated yeah. on what they experience and that's coming from you. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. But one thing the centurion understood was authority. He understood it to such a high level that he knew when he encountered Jesus, he knew something that was different about Christ. Some people, do you know they know something different about you? When you come around, they know it. That's why they ask for certain things. When you come up, they think all the other people that they know could be saved, or uh, Christians or so forth. But when they come to you, they ask you out of everybody else, would you pray? Would you do this for me? Would you do this? Why? Because they know that it's something that is different and more authentic and more sincere about you. That's why certain places we don't, we really don't frequent, we really don't visit, that they call churches. But when you get into the presence and you get into the atmosphere, it doesn't feel like church. It doesn't feel like the Spirit of God is dwelling there. And it feels like the Spirit of Ichabod has been written over that place of worship. But when people have a real encounter, with the God we serve. And when they have a real encounter with the Holy Spirit and they get in your presence, they know it's something different. Yes. That's about you that's radiating life off of you. And when Jesus came and he told Jesus about authority and rank and so forth, and he said, I'm a man of authority and you are a man of authority. He didn't go to no Bible study. He wasn't sitting up under the tutelage of Gamal. He wasn't sitting up under the Jewish sect. But one thing he understood was the power and the authority that Jesus possessed. Amen. And when we understand the power and, and authority that Jesus possessed, when we speak about Christ, we speak boldly. We talk to him with power. We talk to him not, not like he's just some low God that we just leaning on, but no, we talk to him like he is God. When you pray, you need to pray like he is God. Your faith got to outrun your doubts. Your faith got to outrun your, your, your unbelief. Why? When your faith is in action. A lot of times people don't get, don't get to see the fullness of God because they quit.
it on so early. Oh, as soon as he don't heal anything, as soon as he don't give you the promotion, as soon as he don't give you the job, as soon as he don't uh, allow you to open up the business at the time you want it to happen, as soon as he don't remove what you want removed, as soon as he don't step into that 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 debt situation or to those bills or to that sickness, or as soon as they, he allow a loved one to die, then all of a sudden now, nah, well, well, you know what? I, I you know, I done gave it enough time. This church stuff ain't working. But sometimes great faith is found not in people in church. But sometimes great faith is found in a hospital where you see a mother is hooked up to monitors and the little boy don't even know nothing about Jesus. And all he can do is just cry and say, so heal my mama, please. Great faith can be found in some of the, the most unforeseen, undesirable places. And you know, encounter people with great faith. They don't know a lot of Bible verse, but yet still they have great faith. When your faith is an anchor in the Lord, it changes the whole trajectory of how you perceive and how you look at things. Faith ain't based on what you have. Faith is based on who you have. And you know who you have versus what you have. That's what makes the difference. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. The man know that he didn't have the authority to heal us. Thank you, God. And he was a part of a centurion army. He could have easily dispatched water and, and, and medics and so forth to tend to the servant that was homesick. But when he encountered Jesus, oh, yes. he knew something that was different. It's just like the woman with the issue of blood that had the issue of blood for 12 long years. Yeah. You never read in the text where she encountered Jesus prior to it, but she had, she had enough sense when she knew when she heard about Jesus and when he was coming her way, she got in the press. Yes, yes, the Bible says she had a hemorrhage of blood 12 long years. <laughs> Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. The, the cycle that come on every month. Yeah. Sometimes when you don't want, sometimes it's irregular. Sometimes it, it, it lasts longer than you want to last. Yeah. But yet it's still, that's a part of your body makeup. Right. But could you imagine 12 years of that? Thank you, God. You'll be like, Lord, Lord have mercy. Amen. But one thing, one thing that stood out, she didn't allow her condition to diminish her faith. Come on. And sometimes we allow our conditions to diminish or diminish our faith and cause our faith to be so low. Why? Because we haven't seen the change Come on yet. Now. Amen. But if you keep on keeping on, Amen. it's like water in a cave that drips and it keeps dripping. And if you see the rock that is dripping on and you say, how in the world these little dripless of water making this impression on the rock? You know how they make the impression on the rock? Through consistency and persistency. Amen. When you're consistent and persistent, then therefore you begin to make an impression. Not only from the natural, but let's move it over in the spirit. When you're consistent and persistent, but most importantly, when you walk in the line of obedience. Yes, Come on, come on. That's it. That's the game change. That's what makes the difference. So this place that means village or a place of help. Even though they wasn't living up to the name, Joshua 1.9. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1.9, it says this. It says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous and do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you everywhere you go. Yeah. Let me say that again. I'm going to read verse 8 of that. Let's go back to 8. Let's go back to 8. Joshua, stay with me. I'm almost finished. Amen. Amen. Joshua 8, it says, and Joshua 8, 1. Are you there? Amen. I'll give you time to get there. Thank you, God. And it says this, verse 8. This book of the law shall not do what? Depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Yeah. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in what? It. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have the success. Have I commanded you to be strong, 
and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is what? With you. Where you go? Let's go right to verse 8. Let me read that again. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Amen. There's a comma there. Amen. This scripture almost coincides in, 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 in a sense with, with uh, Psalms 1, where it talks about blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of God, of God nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn. Amen. But his delight, his delight, Amen. his love is in the law. Law means instruction. And in his law, do he meditate day and night? Meditate means to ponder with an underthought, to sit there and ponder and look at the scriptures. And in his law, do he meditate day and night? And he shall be what? Like a tree. Planted. Yes. Not so sure planted, but planted. Right. And when we're like a tree that's planted, and when our roots spread out, we connect into the divine Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit runs through our roots like water running through the roots, therefore it brings the tree nutrients. Yes. And his leaf also shall not wither. Yes. And whatsoever he does, shall, and it's like my yes. it shall prosper. Yes. Somebody like was telling Joshua, just like I was with Moses. Just like I was with Bishop Pat. I'm with you, Pat. Yeah. Pat and Pat. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Don't allow this book of the law. What is the book of the law? The word of God. Amen. To be removed out of your mouth. Right. When they talk in word, and you got to talk word. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Let me say that again. Somebody in the back missed it. Right. When they talk in word, you got to talk the word. Yeah. You got to say, thus is talk. It is written. Amen. Amen. David said it so plain in Psalms 2537. He said, I've been young, but now I'm old, but I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor I see bread and bread. Psalm 37, 25. Why? He said, I've been young. But now I'm old. People are afraid to say they're old. No, oh, you get old. Oh, you don't think you get old and go, go, go do something like something you used to do 20 years ago, try it now. See, see if you're old. You ain't young. You, you may look good on the outside, but believe me, that body ain't all intact like you think it is. Oh, I work out four times a week, pal. Great, but I guarantee you, you still can't play three games of 21 consistently. I guarantee you can't play two matches of tennis. I guarantee you still can't run the 100. You may feel good. You may feel exuberated. You may feel energetic, but you still can't do what you used to do. You used to go to the theme park and ride everything. Now you go to the theme park and walk around and, and, and shop around. You get on one or two things tomorrow. That's enough for me for the day. Y'all go ahead. I don't want to spoil y'all for I'll sit right here and watch the kids. Why? Because you can't do what you used to do. There ain't no shame in it. Amen. 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 Joshua, don't let the book of the law. And the reason people go on such a spiritual decline because they allow the book of the law, the word of God, to be removed from the inner man. Amen. I like how the psalmist said in 1, 19 11, thy word have I hid. Oh have I hid? Where you hiding it? Oh on your dashboard? Oh or on your coffee table? Oh uh-huh. Uh, are you just putting it in your backpack, your work bag? No, you got to get it in your heart. Amen. It should be more than just a bumper. I'm so glad the bumper stickers, what would Jesus do, and what would this do, and what Moses would do. No, 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 no. What would you do? Amen. What would we do Amen. when the crisis and, and everything? And a lot of times, people right now, they're, they're, they're so discombobulated with the election, and they're hearing about Harris, and they're hearing about Trump. Well, we know about Trump. And, and, you know, and they hear all this other stuff. But what we gonna do? We are gonna do the same thing we did yeah. uh, uh, when Clinton was in office. Yeah. We gonna do the same thing we did when Reagan was in office. Yeah. We gonna do the same thing we did when Jeb and George Bush and the rest of the Bushes was in office. We gonna do the same thing we did when Nixon was in office. Yeah. You gonna do the same thing you did prior to when Jimmy Carter was in office? Yeah. Yeah. Because the Bible said the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Yeah. 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 Amen. Didn't he not hard Pharaoh hard? Yes, and he told him yes. that he was going to do it. He told him. He told him. Moses, he said, I'm going to hard this heart. Pharaoh, uh -huh. you know, Trump ain't there by coincidence. Yes. 
He ain't just wandering into the White House. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. But all these things are happening for a purpose. Yes. Kamala Harris ain't just on the ticket yes. by accident. Yes. They ain't just pull her out of the hat, amen, at the last minute. Because if you put your trust as so anchored in a political system, then therefore, that's the results you're going to get. Yes. Okay. As soon as they don't fulfill everything you think they ought to fulfill, then all of a sudden you swallow up your man, but you voted for him. So either way, come on somebody, we need to trust the Lord. That's why you notice you don't hear a whole lot of, 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 of political faith-based things in the Word of God. The Bible talks about, yes, in Romans chapter 13, that uh, uh, the government are ministers to, to a certain extent, that they supposed to uphold the law, and those that are upholding the law and abiding by the law should have to fear the law. But we live in a day and age and in a country that that is actually reversed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why a lot of people don't see pastors don't want to say this in church. I'm so glad I got Christ over there. I, I can preach freely here. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times people don't us respect authority. It's not because of what you say and what you stand for, but what the Word of God said, but it's what you exude in. Yeah. How do you think I'm going to trust you? And I see everyone that looks like me predominantly get shot when they got their hands on the wheel and being murdered and being slaughtered for running away and so forth. And they're not finding proper evidence, but they're just slaughtering them like lambs before slaughter. My God, my God. How do you expect for us as a community and people of yes. God to have such respect for authority when all the thing the authorities does is show us how much they can put a foot on our neck? We don't want to talk about this in the house of God. But God is not just a God of righteousness, but the Bible said God is a God of justice and righteousness. How can we can stand on one side of the track, but then when it comes to the other side of the track, we're just as quiet as a mouth. We're so quiet we can hear a pregnant aunt give birth. We can stand for abortion issues. But we can see a young man be murdered over Pokemon cars and say not a word. Well, he shouldn't have been stealing. Mm -hmm. But you're trained mm -hmm. to de-escalate. You're trained. Yes. And you can't tell me some little 10-year-old that's soaking wet ain't even 100 pounds, and he, you got a gun, a bag, you got a taser, of pepper spray, you got the whole nine yards, and you're trained. And you think the only measure you can do is to shoot him. The kill. Oh then you wonder why mm -hmm. the level of respect mm -hmm. is gone. Amen. It's gone because you're the object lesson that's initiating so much. And I'm not saying in some cases there's a more, uh, uh, more uh, 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 police aggression, and it does. Amen. It does. Some cases does. And some, some cases we look at, we got to admit, we got to say, well, hey, you know, you, you can't do all that. Amen. You can't pull the gun, wave the gun, and shoot it two times an hour. And tomorrow, I wonder why they shot my cousin. Well, yeah. Yeah. Amen. but if he's sitting in the car, Say it. and we done seen countless videos, Amen. and he complying, and he's doing everything possible, and then as soon as you tell him to, to get his driver's license, you, you know most of us got is in our back pocket. So you got to reach over and get it out your back pocket. And what you reaching for? You told me to get the water. Pop, 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 pop. Mm -hmm. Yes. But that's why we, our faith got to be so angry. Yes. Hey! Amen. God, so God, God. God. God has kept God. us even in traffic yes. stops. Yes. Yes. Kept us on the job. And thank God he's keeping our children daily in school. And we get these text messages, oh, phone God. calls. And I'm so tired of the phone call. Yes. But I thank God for the phone call. Yes. Amen. Because I remember some time ago that we wouldn't even get a phone call. That's right. Wow. Amen from the school right. that say, hey, they, they, they've been making threats and so forth, and we done neutralized it, or we find that the threat wasn't real. Aren't you glad? I don't even know I'm tired of the call, but on the other flip side of it, I thank God for the call. Because yeah. imagine not getting no call, and you got to go back to pick your son, your daughter, your sibling, your loved one, your, your, your niece, your nephew, and you got to go pick them up, but you ain't picking them up from the elementary. You're not picking You gotta go pick them up. It really ain't picking them up. You just you just point them out and then identify them from the 
the sheep when they pull the sheep from over their head. You didn't drop them off like that. But it's God. That's why we cannot allow the law to depart from our lips. We got to give it to our kids. I don't care if they're standing there out of day listening to that and they rolling their eyes. They can sit there and talk. Let them let them ever. But you better keep giving them the word. I don't care how much they look like they ain't paying attention to it. You better say, Thus saith the Lord, boy. Thus saith the Lord, girl. Let me tell you something about the word of God. You can stand there and look like you ain't paying attention. The longer you stand there and look crazy, the more I'm going to keep praying. They got like they're not interested. Then sooner or later you move away. That's the spirit of the devil working in that child. What you need to do, you need to stand there and make sure they get it. You need to be like Moses Noah. He was so dedicated. He preached for what, 120 years that it was going to rain. He didn't care about what the people were saying and what this people said. And sometimes we're so easily moved because we're so worried about what they say, but what thus said the Lord. But you say what thus said the Lord. You'll stand there 120 days, 12 days, 10 days, 5 days. Don't make no difference. I'm going to stand here and tell you. We got to be willing to spend the time. We must have complete confidence. Listen to this. I'm almost finished. We must have complete confidence in what? In his ability to do what? To change any situation. Not in what we can do. Listen to this. But what, what he's able to do what? Through us. We are conduits. We are instruments. We are tools in the master's hand. Yes, we are. God want to work through you. Amen, somebody. Amen. But verse 9, he says this back in Matthew chapter 8. He said, For I am a man of authority and with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another comes, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does this. But when Jesus heard it, he was marveled. Jesus was marveled. Why? Because something he understood and was doing that the children of Israel wasn't doing at the time. Then when he responded to what he was saying. But here's somebody that's outside of the chosen children or, or, or the children of Israel. But yet still they understood the commandment. They understood the power of God to the, the fact that he said, I'm a man of authority. Amen. And you are a man of authority. Yeah, it's sad that the word of God has penetrated yeah, other people that don't even know as much as some of us know. And, and you sit there and you wonder. And you say, you, why the word of God ain't penetrating me? Because you, first of all, you have to have a receptive. Yes. Amen. See, you can't grow in any aspect of your life if you don't be receptive. And that's why a lot of people, they miss so much out of life because they're not receptive and they wait on the right person to say it. And the, the right person that you think is the right person is really the wrong person because they don't model anything. They don't set an example for, let me help you. They, they go to Oprah Winfrey for, for marital advice. And she got this old twisted relationship and they would stab in that they come on somebody and they go to all these other people in the world for advice and marital advice and, and that's why you get old and old and old and you seem like you can't never accomplish what you set out to do and you wonder why because you're eating from the wrong table. Traditionally, your mother used to teach the sons when they look for the wife. Now we got all these specialists and doctors and PhDs and so forth and the people that's trying to inundate you with information they ain't even married. You ask, well, where's your husband? Oh, I don't have one. <laughs> really? And what you need to do is go ahead, pay her for the rest of the day, and take your purse and walk right on out of that office. Yes. Because we live in a reverse age. That's why I spend extensive time with my daughter trying to tell her what to look for and how to be a wife. Amen. I want her to be a wife. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I want her to be a good wife. Amen. I don't want her to be no headache to nobody. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Want to be, but it, it requires what? It requires equipment and training. How do you know that, Pastor Proverbs 20, 26? What does it say? It says, train up a child. In the way they should go. We all were true to that. I know you're grown and go now, but we all were true to that one period of time before we got a lot of teeth in our mouth. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Before you got gray hair, you was a 
child. You played with toys. You rode a tricycle. You did the double dutch. You did the hopscotch. You did all that, the dodgeball and so forth. You did the merry-go-round, but now all of a sudden now you got older and we moving away from the things and the foundational things of God. And that's why he was telling Joshua, don't allow the law to depart from your mouth. Oh, we're in a different time, Pastor. We're in a different time. I done heard it all. Oh, it's millennials. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Oh, oh you know, the times has changed. And we don't do it that way. Well, my word ain't changed. <laughs> Why you are changing, but the word is staying the same. Oh, but you yeah. believe in the word. So if we believe in the word, we are not, not letting the world or society or cultures or whatever pretty word you want to put on it to change who we are. And we ought to continue to lay the foundational things to the people we know through the word. So we train our children. We train them how to be men. You either raise somebody blessing or somebody's nightmare. Amen. Somebody. We talk about ain't no good men, but well, you better make sure if you got sons, you make sure you you doing your part. Cause we don't want to be getting up all kinds of your, your son got my daughter pregnant four times and he still ain't married up. And then you sitting there trying to defend him. No. Oh, bless their quietness. That's real, God. Amen, Lord. somebody. Lord. Because why? we got to get back to the foundational yeah. things of the Word of God. Yeah. Why they work for you and it ain't going to work for them? How you dare sit up there and hold all that knowledge in you and hold all, all that things that your mama did and taught you and now you just trying to give your children, your loved ones, your siblings a free pass? Yeah. Faith. Woo. Your faith has to be anchored. And stay anchored in the things of God. Faith, I'm almost done. Give me 10 more minutes. Amen. Faith does not operate in the realm of the possible. Faith does not operate in the, if it was possible, you wouldn't need faith. Amen. 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 You wouldn't need it. If you were you don't need it. Amen. I mean, come on, if you got $10, That's you don't need faith to put $10. You, are, you already got it. But you need faith for what you don't have which we have not obtained yet. So therefore, listen to this. Therefore, there is no glory for God in which is humanly possible. Faith begins where, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. Faith begins where man's power ends. When your limited of power ends, that's where faith begins. It is when we come to the end of what, Pastor? Ourselves that we really rely and find God and we depend on God. Psalms 28, 7, I got to give it to you. God gave it to me. The Lord is what? My strength. My strength and my shield. In other words, the Lord is my protection and he's my upholder. He's the one that empowers me. The Lord is my strength and in him my heart do what? Trust. And I am helped. My heart installs and with my son, I give thanks to him. Why? Because who God is in my life. Yes. My heart trusts in him. In other words, my heart so anchored in the things of the Lord, I will not waver. I will not be moved. I will not be entertained by the other things of this world to try to get me so uh, uh, confused and, and put me in such a complex state that I'm no longer, I, I lose faith in God and I put my heart in things. Yes, but he said, my, my son, in other words, what he's saying is his praise. Yes. We ought to have a praise on our lips. Amen. Lord, I just thank you just for putting bread on the table. Yes. I thank you for bologna. I thank you for lunch and I thank you for ham. Yes. I thank you for a quarter tank of gas. Somebody yes. said that in the bus stop. Yes. Lord, I thank you for a quarter tank of gas. Yes. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to just eat out one day in the week for lunch. Lord, somebody had to bring their food all week long. But Lord, I'm so glad that I could take a day off from cooking and be able to go pick something up. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I just thank you. Sometimes we complain about conveniences and we complain about this and we complain about that and we forget that thank God that he made a provision of convenience for you to be able to have it. Yes, and sometimes we, we complain about the minute things. Yeah. Oh, the eggs weren't right and this one right. And I'm quick to say, you know me, I'm quick to say, well, why you ain't cook? Why you ain't wake up early enough? All right. Oh, the coffee wasn't right. Well, if you would have got it early enough, your coffee would have been right. But you was rushing, they was rushing, everything is rushing. Amen, somebody. And sometimes people try to downplay conveniences. I've been in the store, and, and, and they'll try to downplay the little lady, the guy behind the counter, and they'll tell them they need to get a real job. Well, if they got a different job than this job, then who's going to be able to provide these 
coffee and convenience. <laughs> and uh, uh, one lady said, and, and, and I couldn't hold it no longer. I was trying to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, but I couldn't hold it no longer. Pray for your pastor, I'm still human too. And she kept going on and on, and she kept riding the guy, riding the guy. And I said, well, ma'am, I, I believe if he works here, he got real taxes coming out of his check. So if he got real taxes coming out of his check, he got a real job. Which you might be trying to express to him that he don't have the ideal job that you think that's a real job, but I believe he got a real job. Amen. 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 Now get off of him. Amen. 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 Somebody. Shame of faith does not make demands of the Lord. Amen. Genuine, sincere, authentic faith does not make demands. Sometimes people think they can just, just tell God what they're going to do and you're going to do. And I've seen people, and they do it from a good place. But Jesus said it so plainly in James. He said, when we pray, we ask if. See, if, if we don't want to do that. Thank you. We don't want to do it because we, 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 we've been taught some of the other things. All we got to do is claim it and grab it. I done claim my healing. And come on, somebody. I done prayed for people. I done laid the Bible on them, pour oil on them. And, they, and we still did the funeral. That's right. And we still did the funeral. And I trust in God. I believe. I pray so much. I sweat it and pray. We lock in. We sweet his hand. We gave it all we got. We poured our petition to the Lord, and they still rolled the casket. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something, saints. Christians do get sick. Amen. We do go through things. Yes. We do hurt sometimes. Yes. You hear anybody about you claiming nothing? Yes. Child, I would claim that spirit. Well, it's a cold and it's running out my nose. And I need a tissue to catch it unless you're going to volunteer to put your hand on it. Mm, that's real snot. It's coming. It's not nothing I'm claiming. It's in my body. And that's why I'm taking these apple seltzers and thorough blues and, and, and toy plasma. I'm praying. Come on, I'll pray. I, did you pray today? I prayed five times. And I got, I got this, I got that. Why? Right, because you want some relief. Being spiritual, being empowered by the Lord, don't exemplify you from going through the natural things of life. Because some of us, we saved, and we still got COVID, didn't you? Yeah. Some people had it two times. Yeah. And just the same as you want to be. Read your Bible every day and still got COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't know how to do nothing. Don't even barely go nowhere and still get COVID. Yeah. Sit at home most all day long. Go to the grocery store and need me. Go to the doctor and they back home and they go to church and they still end up with COVID. And they spend 90% of their time on the couch and they still come up with COVID. Amen. That's true. Amen. That's true. Amen. But our faith got to remain anchored yeah. in the yeah. things of God. Yeah. Allow your faith to remain anchored. And I'm closing on this note. This woman in Luke 13. The Bible says that she was bowed over 18 years and she could not raise herself up. And she was sitting there listening to Jesus. She had been a long time in the case. For many years, she's bowed over, couldn't raise herself up. And she's sitting there listening to Jesus. Now, you would have thought out of all the things she would have asked listening to Jesus because she knew who Jesus was. You would have thought she would have asked for healing. But if you go back to the text, you would never see where she's not like the, the ten lepers in and, and, and Luke 17 when Jesus came by and the ten lepers shouted from a distance and said, Lord, have mercy on us. Uh -huh. And he told them to go and show themselves to the priest. Right. And the Bible said as they went, they was healed. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't even like the ten lepers. She wasn't like the, the woman in Matthew 15 when the, the daughter was grievous and vexed with the devil. And she came to Jesus and she said, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievous and vexed with the devil. And the disciples standing around to her, sit on the way for she cried. Little well, first of all, she ain't never said none of them. Go back and read the text. She was talking to Jesus. Amen. But, she, but this woman didn't even ask for healing. And, and I like how Jesus said, whom this daughter of Abraham have been bound low these 18 years. Or uh, not she be loose from her affirmatives? And then I like how he put it. He said, but if your ox or your ass dunk it, uh -huh. if it was falling into a ditch, uh -huh. would you not pull him out on the Sabbath day? Yes. I like how Jesus yes. answered. Yes. 
And when Jesus gets through answering everybody to be scratching their head, you can't say nothing. And sometimes that's what we got to do. That's right. you, you keep talking about what would Jesus do, say what would Jesus would say in some of the situations. Say what Jesus would say. And sometimes that's what, a lot of times that's what I do. If you say what Jesus would say, that ain't all them little, little comments and that. Because there ain't no room to say anything. That's right. But this woman, she just wanted to hear Jesus. That's right. She wanted to hear Jesus. And Jesus would pour it out. And he said, woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. Yeah. And she strained herself up. Okay. And some of us are in, in bowed situations. And all we got to do is just stay in the presence and at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And keep listening to the things of Jesus. Yeah. And we can and, and quit gravitating to all these psychologists and all these other people. And did you see your therapist? Yes, I saw him right here in the Word of God. Let me show you what he's talking about today. My therapist told me that if I delight myself in the Lord, he would give me the desires of my heart. My therapist told me if I trust and believe. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you what my therapist told me. I got to think I got so many prescriptions, I don't know if they're going to feel about it. I'm glad he did it all for me. And he paid the price for me. And they wonder why you got joy when they got disharmony. They wonder why you got peace when they walking and working in confusion. They don't, and, and everything else could be going on, and you, and you just laughing and walking and smiling, and they looking at you like, what's wrong with you? And you keep telling them to come see a man, but they don't want to come see him. Because within themselves, they know the change is going to come. And some people, they so in love, infatuated with their misery, they so married to misery, they don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people don't want to be here. I think you say that because it's true. It's real. Some people don't want to be here. No, they just want to burn your phone up with all their negativity and mm -hmm. this bursitis and backsiders and, and sometimes people glory in Ill, illness. I got this. I got that. Well, look at I may have some stuff, but I don't. I don't want to be talking about it like that. Amen. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. <laughs> Unwavering faith. Joshua. Just like I was with Moses, I'm with you. Christ of the Lord. The Lord is with us. The last few times, if you remember when Bishop Kimberly came here, he kept saying that over and over again. He said, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And a lot of times when I go have lunch with him, and he start the conversation now, and he always remind me. He said, go back. Sometimes he call me Bishop. Sometimes he called me Doc. And I just laughed. And he said, the Lord is with you, my brother. Then he said, my friend. He said, the Lord, I, want to let, I want you to know that the Lord is with you. Sometimes what you see, you, you, you wonder. But it takes some time, it takes people to give you that assurance. Yes. See, Amen. when I see your face on Sunday morning, it's more than just traditional. I know a lot of people like to see a pack house, and numbers do, do help in many different ways yeah. and many different things we try to accomplish. But it's more than just seeing your face. Oh, yeah. It's seeing my fellow brother, my fellow sister. Why? Because the Bible says iron does what? Shot it's shot. Iron. We polish each other. Yeah. We build each other up. Do you know sometimes the only genuine hug you get is when you come to church? All the phones and fake girl, ooh, I'm glad to see you at work today. And they, and they got a pile of papers they want to slide over to you. But you know, they got to fly to you first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A bunch of stuff they can't handle, don't want to handle. They don't want to let us know they can't really handle it. So they're going to go over you. Girl, I bought you some, I, you had a little breakfast? Yeah, I bought you some muffins. And I got this, you know, I, I went by, I got two McGriddles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they knew in their mind already they had a, a pile of stuff they needed to work on. And they knew Ella Robinson is as nice as he's going to take care of it for me. <laughs> and I brought him a McGriddle with egg and cheese and sausage. And brought him a cup of coffee. I don't even know if he drank coffee, but I brought it anyway. Mm -hmm. And he just sit over there as humble and nice as he is. He said, no problem, I'll take care of this. And they in the, they in the bathroom, they just think they're so happy. They ain't thanking the Lord enough. And that's what some of the things we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Amen. And we have to pull ourselves together. See, see, prayer don't start when you get outside the house. Prayer starts when you, your eyes open, mouth the eyes. Breath still stay, ain't brush your teeth, ain't wash your face. Come on, somebody, ain't wash your feet, ain't wash yes. nothing. But that's when prayer starts. You turn the TV on and somebody already dead before you can even get out your house good. And they the bomb threat and this and that at the job. And the, somebody to pull somebody over on iPhone and, and roll 
crazy and the, 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 the traffic is hell up. Sometimes you turn the TV on and you just say, Lord, just let it be a smooth ride. And as soon as you turn the TV on, the route you got to go, they got four accidents, somebody dead. You're like, oh, Lord, Jesus, clear all that up by the time I get out of there. Amen. And you hear all this stuff. That's why we got to have some wavering faith. Because we have so many things that are trying to persuade us different Amen. to get off this track, this Christian journey. That's what the Bible says, the race is not given up to the sweat, not to the strong, but them that have endurance, them that say, hey, I'm willing to run all the way. And that's why we need each other. We need each other. What you need each other? To uphold and encourage. When you cry, you need some a real shoulder to lean on. Mm-hmm. Not some shoulder to lean on and they sign up for some program. But no, no, no. A real shoulder to lean on when somebody will pray for you and pray you through. Amen. And to help you and love you Amen. sincerely without scandalizing your name all over Facebook Same. and uh, Instagram Same. and so forth and talk. Girl, you know I had, man, you know I had him a last week. Same. You know I had to get the light back Same. on. Same. You know I had to put some food on and say, we the church. Yes. We don't do that. We come together and make it happen. Yes, That's what they were doing in the book of Malachi. A lot of people talk about the title, the tenth part of it, but the reason why they was bringing so much into that what about said bringing it to my storehouse. Why? Because when the, when it was drops and the rain would flow and come at certain seasons, then you those that was a part of the uh, flock and the body of Christ, therefore if you like some, you didn't like anything. Why? Because we were going to the storehouse and get it. They were doing the same thing in the book of Acts, chapter five. Yeah. Jesus. The Bible said when they had anyone that had any need, they brought all their possessions. They had so much stuff, they wouldn't dare you have a need in their presence. Amen. God gonna bless this church so much so I will tell you what I need and I'll find out you need a car and we as a church can write a check and write to give you a car Amen. and I ain't talking about some limit that we gotta push it in and pour water in the radiator we thank you I believe God for major things I believe God for major things we gotta think big sense of God thank you for yes to help people get calls Yes. That's how we demonstrate Christ. Yes. When people see Christ, they want to see more than just a hallelujah and a prayer. Oh, demonstrate Christ. Yes. Well, we can buy somebody a house, they ain't got to keep renting for the rest of their life. Yes. And show them some real financial economics. Oh, Teach them some of them things that you got your credit. Your credit at a 705, don't want to tell nobody, they help nobody. Yes. And if the sister saw us, I'm talking child, I'm just trying to get my credit up. Yes. Jesus. We need to share the principles. When will they don't receive them? Well, that's on them. Alright. It's not my job to it's not my job to put the food in your stomach. It's my job just to feed you. Yes, Lord. If yes, you eat it, that's up to you. Yes, my mama, she right now, she used to cook, she tell you. They, they used to feed up what was on the table. It wasn't no talking about what you want tonight. No. Smother pork chop, rice, and beans. And if you ain't like that, then you go to bed home. Yeah. Yeah. Some people want to be home. Some people go and leave in church home. Because they refuse to eat. If you enjoyed today's message, please leave a like, and if you would like to hear more, please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed today's message, and thank you for supporting the ministry.